Good morning. It is Thursday, the 27th of October, and we continue looking at the um, incredible book of Revelation. Today, looking again at chapter 12, but now going from verse 7 through to the end. A quick recap on what we looked at yesterday was the birth of a male child from a woman who is then taken up to heaven. And we did conclude that the woman is probably more indicative of the people of God and also more specifically the, uh, the people of Israel. Um, but it can be interpreted also as being the, uh, the Messianic Jews or the people who follow God, which therefore would include you and me. And that the dragon um, is symbolic of Satan, but not necessarily specific him as an individual, but him and the hordes that follow him. Or to, to put that in a d different way, those who are not standing with Christ, those who are therefore opposed to Christ. Remember, Scripture makes quite a clear definition that it's very difficult, impossible, in fact, to stand in some kind of middle neutral ground. You're either for Christ or you're against Christ. And the um, woman and the child escape to the desert, um, looking yesterday's reading, and the desert implies not necessarily that dry, sandy place that we would literally uh, translate the word desert to imply, but a place of spiritual sanctity and safety. And we are also told that the boy child is uh, caught up to heaven. And that um, boy child we did identify and ag agree would be the Messiah, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And his being caught up to heaven would imply his um, resurrection and ascension to heaven. In today's story, we pick up that Satan and his followers um, fight in heaven. This is probably referencing Satan himself and the demons, the other fallen angels, because as humans, and those of us who do not follow Christ, not those of us because I'm not part of that, but those who do not follow Christ are, of course, um, restrained to an earthly existence. So the demons and Satan fight in heaven and they are then cast out to the earth. They try and attack the woman again um, and her, her, her followers or the offspring of her. So again, the woman is not just um, the mother of um, our Lord, Mary, but the people of Israel and the people who follow Christ. And the offspring, obviously implying those who have come to believe in Jesus as Lord and Savior. And this casting out of Satan and his followers, the demons, um, it is not referencing the very first time Satan was cast out from heaven to give free roam of earth, but in a sense implies that final casting out. Now, is this something that will come in the in the future, or is it something that has already happened? I, I tend to lead to an understanding that it may still happen, and so that in this sense then, Revelation is speaking of a future event. But interestingly, we also know that the persecution that broke out against the church from the Emperor's Domitian, um, and uh, Nero was intense and the persecution and the and the fall of Rome and not Rome sorry of Jerusalem in AD 70 was unbelievably um, traumatic to the people and and so many of the prophecies that Jesus gave um, especially the Olivet discourses um, speak I believe specifically of that time and it could well be exactly what John is referencing here um, that intense persecution. Um, and so there's a sense in which this book is referencing, Revelation is referencing the persecution, ongoing persecution against Christians, but also times or periods of intense persecution where we would need or has already taken place. The people of God would need to literally just hide away, um, escape to the desert, um, to a place of spiritual sanctity and wait for that period to end. And interestingly, the period is defined by a period of time. We had said earlier that Revelation is and could be interpreted as uh, prehistory, current history, future history, or entirely symbolic. And there is a sense in which some period of time is, is given. It's, it's given in different ways, uh, 1,260 days, which equates to approximately three and a half years. And we are told in the reading this morning 
that this period of sanctity where uh, the people of God, the offspring of the um, of, of this woman, um, are to uh, be for a period which is described as a time, times, and half a time. And we understand that, especially if we understand that a period of time has already been given of 1,260 days, three and a half years, that a time is then referencing one year times as a plural is referencing then another two years. So we're already up to our three years and then half a time back to three and a half years in total. So it, it kind of says that intense persecution that the Jews suffered with the fall of Jerusalem would be time bound, whether it was precisely 1,260 days is unlikely, but it was a period of time that was, can I say, manageable, long enough to be serious, but not so long enough as to destroy all the followers of Christ. Now, such a period of intense persecution may well come in the future. Um, I do believe that an element of the book of Revelation is to say to us, we live with Satan running around, a roaring lion, Jesus says, who is out to devour us. And so we don't necessarily run away, but we must know that there will be times of intense persecution. And so we hold faith to Christ that whatever happens is in the eyes of God, time bound, there will be an end to it and Christ will return and save his church and Satan will be finally destroyed. However, that takes place and whenever that takes place, we are not actually given a very clear idea of it. So in faith, we hold firm to Christ. So folks, again, the book of Revelation, fascinating, but actually quite difficult. Read it with that open mind, um, but glean the, 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 the bare facts, the bare necessities, as I think Mowgli and the bear sang to each other, um, ascertain those bare necessities that we can glean from this book, and then let's hold on to that in faith. Folks, have a wonderful day. We'll chat again tomorrow. God bless.